Is this a little bit embarrassing to share? Maybe. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars. will sing about your heart maybe the trees will whisper the word maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope Let's continue with the list. Okay, bin excess packaging. We're done. Yeah, we've done quite a lot. We've done quite a lot of that. Okay. Put A2 card. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I haven't done that. Build more cardboard shelves. Cardboard King? Let's do that. Let's do the Cardboard King. Let's do the Cardboard King. Yes. <laughs> so, what are you going to do? What else is on the list? Uh, declutter. I really don't want to. No, you don't. I'm going to commit to doing one box. One box. You see how you get on? Yeah. Then I might commit to doing another one. Let's go. Nice. Cup of tea first. Anything to get out of starting work. Get on with it. Is right? One of these? Yeah, look. Easy. I could uh, actually label things, wouldn't it? And get an yeah. idea of... A bit of weight to it. Oh, it's all the glass. Oh. All the house stuff. It's not house stuff. That's um for my um observational... Props. Yeah. Organisation. Still life glass props. Yeah, good, perfect. Ah. Yeah. They're organised now. Okay, next. Step one. Choose the right box for the right... Job. <laughs> right, width. Check, check. So that's going to be a little cupboardy. Cupboardy. What I'm else? I'm going to put two or three shelves in. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Okay, so that's that's that box. And then this one, because it's not very deep, it actually works really well to have A6 postcards in. Okay, then what, what's step two? Uh, step two... <laughs> I'll edit that out. Yeah, just cut that bit, yeah, that, 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 that last bit. I need some cardboard to actually make up the yeah. shell. Yeah, boxes now. Excellent. I had five pairs of shoes, so now two empty boxes. That was empty anyway, wasn't it? Optional is a cutting mat, but definitely needs something to cut on. A good blade, be very careful. We have a ruler that has a protective uh, edge, so our fingers aren't close, and obviously a pencil. Glue gun, glue sticks. We need extra cardboard to make up the shelves. Sometimes you get double thickness cardboard, sometimes you get single thickness, and this is single, so it's not strong enough. So what I've had to do is create another piece that I'm going to glue glue down basically to double double strengthen the that shelf. But now that's ready to get glued up. It shouldn't sit on a half floor. I'm going to show you what I found. <laughs> oh, fifty rupee. 
It's fifty rupees a lot. Well, it's not just fifty. That's the alpha note. Oh. Anyway. meant to be uh, having shelves like that because it was meant to fit in that. Oh, one. can you take it apart? No, I'm going to have to use it as it is. Okay, so don't fit greetings cards then. Yeah, it does, they just stick out a bit. It's fine. Compared to your other work, it's 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 not up to scratch. I think maybe <laughs> maybe the reinforcement might be in in order. It's happened to the usual standard of the Cobble King. It's been on holiday. <laughs> going to reinforce it, or are you going to do the next one? Then the next layer. The next layer. It takes me a little while to, to get out of the house. I've had a little coffee, so that helps obviously. And there's a meeting this morning at my where my studio is, so I'm gonna to go to that. I'll probably talk to you after that. I don't know if this is kind of a little bit embarrassing to um yeah, to show. But this is how I left it yesterday because I've literally had enough. So I need to finish. I mean, I have actually managed to empty some, which is amazing. This is the next one to go through. Is this a little bit embarrassing to share? Maybe. This is the reality of my creative bursts. And these boxes are something that I should have gone through literally years ago. These have been waiting. So it does mean that I can grab my jewellery kit and sort it out properly. So I love making jewellery. I'm by no means an expert. It's not my thing really, but I really enjoy it. So and I've never claimed to be a minimalist. I thought when we moved into the van I'd love to be a minimalist. So I was kind of aspiring in that direction. But when it comes to to art and craft and creativity and that kind of stuff you know there's no way but at the same time I don't want to have excess stuff that I don't love I don't use and I don't need that's the criteria if you like I've actually got to go now to this meeting so you might think oh she's just procrastinating the stuff but I'm not because I will show you when I come back that I you know I get on with it you know even when we're sorting out boxes and things that are going to be you know plonked way up high and it's not going to be sort of in my everyday day-to-day -day pathway if you like of getting to my workspace it's going to feel different in the space that's really important to me so finding the extra energy needed to do these extra tasks isn't always easy is it so I don't need to tell you that I'm pacing myself a little bit a slow but steady process so you know the story about the hare and the tortoise sometimes there's comments on the video that are like you know we don't want to watch you when you're you know um not doing so well and you know i agree if you if you want to be uplifted then maybe someone saying they're not feeling uplifted is not the most mood boosting video to watch so if that's the case with you i'm really sorry but at the same time authenticity and reality and the whole social media painting over the bumpy times as well and i'm just not wanting to present that and you know yes there's loads of stuff that i don't put on the internet and that are private and obviously different people feel different comfort levels of sharing certain things and not sharing other things and so you know we just have to find our comfort levels with that i'm personally not comfortable with just showing all the shiny stuff this is what we're dealing with and yeah it's a working messy studio I'll take you around the corner as well because I want to get this area sorted as well which is basically you know plant babies that need 
certain things, certain amounts of light and shade. And my journaling nook, which is becoming a stacking area of, um, yeah, to make everything else workable, if you like. And then obviously my sorting area down here. And yeah, I didn't actually get very far yesterday because how to put it then? I had, I had a wobbly day, basically. Yeah. I had some really difficult news again, but it's kind of like, I don't want to include that in, you know, the videos because not every time anyway, because I feel like I've been sharing more downs than ups, if you like, in the last few vlogs. Anyway, we are going to get motivated today. I've come in a bit earlier than I kind of planned, really, because that is my power time. That is when I have the most energy in the day. And I just want to address a few things, you know, as I've shown you. I feel like I've completely reached my saturation point in the sense of the amount of stuff I have so it very very quickly becomes disorganized and chaotic and then really quickly after that it becomes you know unworkable if you like I'm moving things so that I have space to do other things I do apologize about the noise as well I've got the windows open so there's a bit of you know cars and stuff yeah I need some air in here I need to get sort of you know the energy moving around I think step one is to you know get rid of the junk get rid of the clutter get get rid of the stuff that's not junk and clutter that I don't use and I think now I've been in here you know over a year I've become you know really comfortable too comfortable itchy nose sorry he's getting itchy nose when I'm talking to you but anyway it's one of those things isn't it where you've got more space so i moved out of my past studio fitted everything perfectly and it also very quickly became a pickle now i've had more space i've put a few extra things in you know the day bed and an extra table and this that and the other more plant babies there is a reason for that and i've you know i've mentioned that before so you know don't give me a hard time about my plant babies and yeah, I've got this beautiful space. I'm not making the most of it. I've become a little bit stagnant. Then when I come in, it sucks the energy out of me. I feel like the mess, you know, drawing the energy out of me. I'm very sensitive to energy and energy of spaces and that kind of thing. And maybe you are too. So let me know if you sort of get sense of the space in the comments. I think we all benefit from organized and tidy spaces and whatever level of organized and tidy and decluttering means for us, because I think we all have our personal levels of what's okay and then what's not okay, if that makes sense. Have you ever been in love? I dove in from high above And if the answer's no, well then I'd like to get to know ya Georgia So I thought I would just show you the, yeah, up here. There's two empty boxes, basically, which is fantastic. And then as I come down, I haven't sorted the bottom suitcase. And then there's a, a box, that box there, that I haven't sorted yet. But basically, that's got rid of a load of stuff. And I'm really happy, you know. I'm gonna have a tea break now. I think that's what I'm gonna do. 
Amazing though, once you start to shift a couple of things, I think sitting and having a cup of tea and having a think is really important and should definitely be on the list as part of the process. You know, declutter, de junk, get rid of stuff, and then sit and have a think about, you know, logistics and ergonomics, you know, without being too dreamy about it as well. Sometimes our idea of what we want it to look like aesthetically when it comes to the reality of how we actually use a space, especially if it's a working space, that can, you know, have an argument, if you like, in your head, because you kind of idealistically like it to look like this, but the reality is something different. So you have to kind of work with that, basically, is what I'm saying. So I feel like a little tour is kind of in order of uh, my wet area. I've just kind of finished it. I'll do like, you know, different levels of it. I can't, I don't think, get quite up there. Not really high up. I'm kind of done over here now and it's loads better. I haven't completely and utterly, you know, done it as a 10 out of 10 version of a tidy up. Um, I've got so many little bits and bobs. I think, you know, in, an, in a craft or art room, you have so many bits and bobs and so it can feel a little bit overwhelming. So I've kind of done a really good swoop, if you like, a blitz so that I can come in and work here and it still needs some, you know, fine tuning. But basically I've got um, bottles of water in that corner because I don't have a sink in here. And then I have a bucket to put, you know, dirty water in. So that's kind of my sink, which is out the way because I tend to trip over things and what have you. So out the way is good. And then over here, I've got paint brushes and acrylic mediums and Mod Podge and fixatives and sprays and inks and all sorts of stuff. Um, over there. Little things that need a shelf basically and then some of my things that need a shelf you know if they're in use then they're allowed out but you know I can just plonk them over there there's no arrangement it's just put it where it fits and that's where it'll be so I tend to not lose things that way. And then I've got kind of like load of rags and old towels and stuff I'm constantly recycling those. I tend to take them home once every six months and wash them all and bin the really nasty ones but that works really well for me and then here I've got some kind of um, a little mini toolbox if you like so I like to peg things up and so I need my hammer and a little few bits of tools bits and bobs and that's just a little scan of, of that shelf you see and then I've got a load of brushes here which yeah overflow I like to have places where things can overflow because it allows me to get messy and I know I'm going to get into a bit of a pickle so that's you know taking that into account I think is really important yeah we have to get real um, about the way we work and so yeah they've got basically things put up that I'm actually working on, paintings I'm working on. And then up here, if I can just, some are in progress, some are finished, some are, you know, a 
kind of series. So my flower powers are in series and I want to do some of the really colourful ones, which I call my Truly Madly Deeplies. Um, you can see three of them there. And so they're there to continue that series. And then I've got the ones with the dark or black backgrounds. Those are to finish that series, which is my Flowers in the Moonlight series. And then moving further up, I've kind of left a, a load of space. I've got some palettes here and I've left a load of space. I like to have, you know, countertop space. As I say, it's prime location. And I have actually spent quite a long time clearing all underneath. I like the look of it more clear than it was. And I have a couple of boxes which stash away really nicely there. They are full of fabrics, clothes I need to adapt and that kind of thing. So sewing projects and fabrics are in there, tucked out the way. And then I've got a heater which I plug in occasionally in the winter which I've tucked out the way because I'm not going to need that. And then a few sort of frames and bits and bobs behind there. I've actually got some larger paper. So I've got some A1 and a two paper behind here as well as, as a couple of gold frames which I like to play with. You know, part finished things and have a look and see with a frame on, is that finished? That can actually help and I, and I love those gold frames and so I have a couple of those in the studio. A uh, painting I got from a charity shop which I love. And then back over to here then, I, I think you've probably seen my lovely paint storage that James made me with all the hooks which is great for all my acrylic paints. I've got a small selection of other paints, my colour wheel and my colour mixing book. These are some works in progress that I've got going on. And then I've got my Serendipity Fairy and another lady here. I'm not sure who she is. She's been in progress a little while and I've got, yeah, a few things going on. My palette and brushes. I allow myself to have, you know, I don't have to put all my brushes away. You know, these are certain ones that I've been using for certain projects. And so I like to keep those kind of things together um, and in situ until I've, you know, finalised projects or series or themes. And then being completely transparent, here we have, you know, my next job really then. So this desk is now covered with all sorts of random bits and bobs that need putting away. I've got a tech um, basket here, which is a lot of wires and bits and bobs for my tech kit. It's very handy to just have under there hidden away. And I've got a pile of canvases here, so I'm not sure where I'm going to put those. Maybe I'll leave them there. It's quite good. And that's my grounding mat, which James got me. So he got me one for the studio. So I, yeah, I can ground while I'm in the studio now, which is really helping. And so, yeah, that's what I've got going on. And then over here, I've got to sort my art trolley and some bits and bobs. So I'm really kind of getting there now. But yeah, this is life changing, definitely. And I can, you know, come in here and I've got space to work. I don't have to tell you, do I? It's so much easier than having to, you know, clear a space first. And, and that's the beauty of having a creative space and being able to leave your stuff out. It's a huge, huge luxury. And, you know, I haven't always had this either. So I'm very grateful for it. So it was about time I, I tidied that up. I think it had got into a pickle. You know, as I said earlier on, it, it's it's like it drains your energy before you even get started. And we can't have that, can we? Because energy is very important. We have to sort of think ahead for ourselves, don't we? And so if I come into the studio in the morning and I've had a terrible night's sleep or I'm not feeling great and full of beans and my energy level's like that, that big, which, you know, sometimes happens, doesn't it? So this just helps Wendy in the future, if you like. I'm doing some self-love for future days, future times, yes. And even if I'm not working over here, it just, it feels so good, doesn't it? I've had a clear out that is, yeah, life-changing. And may this inspire you to clean a little corner or a cupboard or a box, declutter first, and then rejig it to the next layer. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be workable. And then you can go in with another layer, another day, another day if necessary. I'm always saying things, aren't I? Do it for the process. It's not just about the final result of the final, you know, painting or fairy or flower power or whatever it is. It is about, you know, life, 
being a journey. Let's not forget about that and let's not minimise that because it's all about inspiring ourselves on those little steps to go a step further and a step further and a step further, even on the things that we don't really want to do. Because to be absolutely honest, the last thing I felt like doing this morning when I got in was, you know, being confronted with what I was confronted with, where I finished off yesterday. We're on a journey and it's not always an easy one. So if we can facilitate ourselves a little bit more ease and consideration for the future to make it work for us and not feel we have to compare it you know to anyone else I don't have the most aesthetic studio I, I appreciate that so if you come over to my YouTube quite a lot you, you will have seen you know the pickle that things get into and, and I don't hide that I just plonk the camera on and talk to you but at the same time I do appreciate you you know watching me throughout all my perhaps not quite so organized stages that I go through with my creativity you know I'm really much a believer of trying to be re a realistic and so I like to work in a space and make a mess and then tidy up and then I know my needs if you like it was a little bit like when I was becoming a new mum and I was setting up the nursery area in the, you know the corner of my bedroom um, I lived in a one-bedroom flat so I didn't have a separate bedroom as a nursery as it were but I did have a space that I designated for you know when the baby came when my daughter came and I remember organizing everything you know putting all the little nappies and clothes and because I got given so much from friends and family I was so lucky and so I organized it all really beautifully and then when it came round to it you know after my daughter was born and I was trying to sort out the chaos of becoming a new mum and sleepless nights and all the things that babies need it was all in the wrong place it was all you know not grouped correctly everything got rejiggled and redone basically you have to live in a space I think is what I'm trying to say before you know how to use it I've been in this room now for just over a year and finally I feel like I'm getting there with the space I feel like I've got the furniture in the right place I feel like I've got the right workspaces according to the lighting because obviously light moves around as well and so you have to think about that especially when you're doing things like paintings and color matching and that kind of thing also you know how I move around the space um, and I have extra things as well like tripods which I don't really want to trip over all the time maybe I have been tripping over some stuff you know yes I've kind of been doing that thing I used to do when I was a little girl when my bedroom was a mess and most of my growing up was spent sharing a bedroom with one of my sisters because we were a very similar age and so we'd make a little pathway through the, the stuff so that we could actually get you know to the bed or you know and that's kind of what I've had in here really a little pathway so to have a clear floor is like absolute heaven to me right now if I'm really honest may you be inspired to do a little something So I'm just rearranging some plants. My plant babies do take over a little bit because I love them. I'm more than happy to accommodate space for my plant babies, but they do sometimes just need a little bit of managing to, you know, rearrange them and things like that. Basically onto the last bits and bobs and I've got to find a home for a few last things. And then I think my swoop and blitz may be done. My biggest lesson in this is don't overthink it. <laughs> so yeah, I've just got to find a few last homes for things. Yeah, I think I'm really winning and the whole studio feels completely different. Even though it's like the mini decisions and stuff, I think when we start overthinking things, that's when things get really, really tiring. As we move through the process and then we're enjoying the process because we're lightening the load and lightening up the feel of everything. Yeah, that's my biggest lesson from this one. And also in life, I've got a couple of things going on behind the scenes, if you like, which 
yeah, are quite challenging. Struggling a little bit today. And I was messaging James this morning, my rock, saying, you know, I'm quite stressed and anxious about things. And he messaged me back and said, don't overthink it. And I just thought how we can apply that to everything including the decluttering I've been doing in the past week. There's a sweet lesson in there for us, isn't there? For anyone that needs to hear that right now, because I think we overcomplicate things so much. I know I do. Prime example here, I've got my basket that I'm not sure where, where is going. And I've got a few last bits and bobs. And I'm thinking, why don't I put my last bits and bobs in the basket? Don't overthink it. Just finish off the process. So I'll leave you in peace for now. Thank you, as always, so much for watching. Try to keep your lights shining bright, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. We Bye. got a brand new day. Good love is on the way. And if you take my hand, I'll walk with you to Georgia. Have you ever been in love? I dove in from high above. And if the answer's no, well, then I'd like to get to know you. Outside is not that cold And if you take my hand I'll walk with you to Georgia And I don't know what those men see But I see you right next to me And if you take my hand I'll walk with you to Georgia Yeah.